Hello, and welcome to Shine Chats. I'm Kristen Barrett, Executive Director of Dental Strategy and Operational Excellence at Henry Shine. I'm here today with Dr. Christian Pavel, co-founder of Dental Yogis. Alongside his fiance, Danielle Kisholi, the Dental Yogis hosts a myriad of health and wellness programs specifically for dental professionals, including what looks and sounds like a really fantastic dental aid yoga retreat in the Dominican Republic. Welcome, Christian, and it's great to see you again. Thanks for taking some time to be here again. Thank you so much for having me, Kristen. It's truly an honor. So Christian, uh, and I know we talked about this before, but the topic of mental health and mental wellness is really top of mind for a lot of people today. It seemed to be on the rise um, the last few years, and certainly the effects of the pandemic have really brought it to the forefront from both a clinical standpoint, but also from an overall wellness and happiness standpoint as well. You and Danielle have been tuned into this for quite some time, specifically how mental health impacts dental practitioners. From your perspective, share with us if you don't mind, what is the connection between mental health and dental practitioners, particularly maybe those in leadership roles? And how does that maybe relate to their ability to manage a practice and manage a team? That's a great and very loaded question, Chris. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to just try to summarize from my experience what I've noticed both in my life and in the lives of our friends, our clients, our loved ones. Everything's moving at a much faster pace. And it's this pace that dis disconnects us from ourselves, from our bodies, from our desires. There's always a myriad of things that have to be accomplished and a very slim amount of time to do it. At least that's the narrative that we are integrating. And what I'm finding in my practice and in my life is that it's more just repeated thoughts and patterns and habits than truth in all actuality. And I see this often even on our retreats when we're in, you know, this beautiful lush jungle, the agenda is very light and the dentist or, or new people are like, what's happening next? Do we got to go? We got to go to hit. We got to do this. Oh, I forgot this. Oh, no, did I? You know, and it's just that pattern that reinforces and our central nervous systems are not meant to sustain this intensity, this fight or flight, if you will. And it tends to cascade as we, as we move up in roles and responsibilities too, because then it's much easier to not think about ourselves or put ourselves last in this dynamic and disconnect from ourselves completely because now we have all this staff to worry about. We have families, we have all these other roles and responsibilities and agendas. So we come first, but the great irony that I see is when we make the time to put ourselves first, to slow down, to reconnect to our bodies, to actually experience what it is we're feeling rather than distract from it or stress about the lack of it, then we're able to move with much more coherence and a lot more confidence or just confidence from a calm standpoint rather than a tense stress standpoint. And it, it takes practice, but once we let go of that need or that impulse to rush repeatedly, we're gonna notice some results. And the results usually are approaching our lives and our roles with more grace and ease. And that usually results in productivity too. The Navy SEALs have a saying about this that they live by, it's slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I love the, I love the term confidence that you, you used and, and just um, even the way you approach the, the conversation about it, having a, a slow conversation about being, it sounds like a little bit more intentional about what you do so that you're doing the right things and you're interacting with people in the ways that you would expect them to. I assume you wouldn't, you and Danielle both wouldn't have this passion towards what you do if you weren't seeing firsthand real life effects of this in dental practices. So can you share a little bit about what you see as far as the, the benefits of, of what this confidence approach and this attention and this intention around mental health really has? Is it is it financial benefits? Is it connections with people? Is it how you're, how you're able to treat your, your patients? What are the benefits to a dental professional? I think a lot of people can relate to feeling like they're going in circles. I definitely do when I feel that rush, when I feel pressure, so to speak, 
And it's easy from, to deceive myself into thinking the pressure is coming from outside. But it's always a reaction. It's a choice that I'm making to say that this pressure is here. This deadline is marked and I'm overdue. And the pressure comes internally now. We're no longer in schools, right? We no longer have that, you know, and there are real deadlines and real uh, challenges. But for the most part, they come within. And that pressure, that thought, that fear tends to be paralyzing and constricting. So on the opposite side of the spectrum, again, when, when we slow down, when I slow myself down enough to recognize and see the truth in these patterns and realize that, okay, it's not the end of the world if I'm just a little bit late here, maybe I can take the time to slow my breathing, compose myself and come with a new energy because we convey impact, not through, not so much through what we say, through our words, only about 10%, 15 to 10% of our body of our um, communication is verbal. The rest is through body language, through energetics. And when we come at a situation with a calm and clear, loving energy, it's a very, very different dynamic than an inadvertent way. I sorry, I went in a big circle there, but <laughs> the more we, the more we slow down, um, the more likely we are to recognize what it is these whispers are in our bodies. Um, before they turn into screens. Does that make sense? It does. And the idea that we're constantly wrapped up in chasing something, something different, something new, something better, something more than anything that we've done right. in the past, I think has, you know, as, as you alluded to, just kind of become who we are as a society. Right. And, and it's, I'm sorry. I wanted ahead. to just briefly answer from a financial standpoint to productive financial, you name it, those, those two energies, they really... They really shift. So when we're coming at it from a state of urgency, from a scarcity, from a survival need, I need to get through this. You need this procedure. Um, you need to do this role. Uh, that type of scarce, um, constricting energy tends to create more disparity in, in, rather than production, rather than instead of coming from, this is what I suggest. I think you would benefit tremendously from this. Um, this is your role in the office. How could you bring it to your best? You know, coming just from a more calm energy. Again, the words are not even as important as the energy that it's coming from. I, I have to assume that that approach and that energy and the, the tone that you use in a, in a world where the, the war for talents is the buzzword right now, right? It, it's, it's tough to find people who are engaged in their jobs in the same ways. And Having spent the majority of my professional life in human resources, I, I've seen firsthand that that seems to come from this idea that finally the, the world is reprioritizing a little bit and work maybe doesn't fit in the same way that it used to before. It still does. It still has its place. But I would assume that a lot of what you're speaking about and a lot of the approach that you're talking about also makes it easier to keep people as part of your team. So as, as a leader, I, I have to assume you've seen firsthand the ability that these approaches and this this mindset has in making people feel more engaged and more comfortable working in dental offices where things are maybe a little bit calmer. Yes, the number one narrative we hear is it's so hard to find good people these days. Well, if that's what we're repeating to ourselves, we're going to project that energy. And there's an air of superiority first off that's repulsive because nobody wants to work for someone that thinks they know everything and they know better than them. And second, there's that scarcity, right? There are no good people. I need to find good people. And it's so subtle. It's so subtle, but it's, it's so paralyzing again. And, you know, I think making the shift to, you know, just, okay, good, good. I haven't found the perfect match yet. That's okay. What is that perfect match? Just slowing down and asking before, running to race through hundreds of applicants and find anyone and scrounging for something, what is that perfect role that you're seeking? And it's, it's surprising how hard it is to answer that because most of us, we just focus on what's wrong, what's not that role. And of course, that is what we quote unquote manifest or our awareness starts to bring our, ourselves to. But I think it's as simple as just slowing down and thinking, okay, what is that ideal person? What do they look like? How would I interact with that ideal person? Can I 
begin interacting in that way so I can create space for this world to fulfill itself. Often the clients that we work with that have this position, those problem staff members that, that they wanted to get rid of end up changing completely and becoming completely different people because they become different people. The leaders become different people. We have to lead by example and it begins with taking care of ourselves first. That's wonderful. And, and quite honestly, you make it sound so easy, but it's in, in reality and in practice, it's probably, it, it takes a while to get there, right? So for, for some of our viewers who might be thinking, this is just a bridge too far for me. I'm too caught up in the hustle. I'm too caught up in the bustle. My day-to-day -day is a little bit too chaotic. Where should they start? Where, what, what are maybe a few simple tips that you can share so that the, the audience has a place to start from and something that they can meaningful do, meaningfully do starting tomorrow? Absolutely. And first off, these are all idealisms. You know, I is it, it, the reason that I preach this stuff so much is because I need this practice and I need to constantly echo it back and hold myself accountable. And on the note of accountability and practice, the art of slowing down really begins at the beginning of the day when it's the hardest. So if you, I, I don't know many happy, successful people that don't have a solid morning routine. By allowing yourself an hour, sometimes that means waking up an hour early. There are a million reasons that you know it can't happen, but if you can push through those and create it, I promise you it, it will pay off in all aspects of the life. And I call it sacred morning routine. And the word sacred is just an intention to take it more seriously. My morning routine starts with moving my body, moving the energy because the body's all already used to being slow and gradual. So getting that engine started, so to speak, and then slowing it down afterwards. So I'm not in this rush. And the most important practice in my morning routine is not touching the cell phone. Once the alarm is off, putting it down because those algorithms are designed to trigger and hyperstimulate our central nervous systems. Everyone's cell phone routine leads to triggers of insecurities, triggers of overwhelm, and triggers of needing to do so much more than we already are based on you know, messages, social media, investment accounts, whatever it is that we check, news, of course. Um, <clears throat> so I invite you to put that aside, start slow and just focus on the morning routine and focus on getting in the habit of checking in with yourself. Well, great advice, just checking in on some of those habits that you might've developed that, uh, that maybe aren't the healthiest things for you and maybe not actually what your, what your body needs at that time. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Christian, for being here today uh, and having this open discussion. And please pass my thanks on to Danielle as well. I will. Thank you so much, Kristen. I'm wishing you and all the listeners the most incredible day. Breathe, take it slow, and enjoy.